Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and my voice is still not 100% yet, but we're gonna keep on going here. Today we're taking a look at the Geekum Mini IT13S Mini PC. This is powered by an Intel i9 processor. We don't typically see these on mini PCs like this. This, however, is the mobile i9 processor, a 13900HK. It's got 10 cores and 16 threads. And if you were looking for something for media serving or some other application where you needed an Intel-based mini PC with some horsepower behind it, this one might be worth taking a look at, although there are better performing mini PCs at around its price point. We're gonna dive into this mini PC in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Geekum. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $699 as configured. This one's got that i9-13900HK processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It is upgradable, and if you flip it over, you can pop open the bottom here, and you've got more storage opportunities. So you have a two and a half inch SATA slot there on the bottom of the case, along with your NVMe there on the left. It also has a slot for a 2242M SATA drive there in the middle. I would have liked to have seen two NVMe slots because that's typically what we see on this class of hardware. And then of course, you've got your upgradable RAM. This runs on DDR4 memory, not DDR5. Now you can upgrade it to a maximum of 64 gigabytes of RAM if you want to go a little bit further. What I like about it is the build quality. It's got a nice solid metal case here very compact and efficient. And as you'll see in a little while, the cooling is pretty effective on here as well. I also like that it's got a SD card slot here on the left-hand side. On the front, you've got two USB-A ports that run at 10 gigabits per second, along with a headphone microphone jack and of course your power button. There's nothing on this side other than a Kensington lock. And then on the back, you can see how many other ports they've managed to squeeze into this thing. Here you've got two 40 gigabit USB 4 ports. These are also Thunderbolt compatible, and you can use these for display output along with the two HDMI ports here for a total of four. I did test those USB 4 ports a little bit earlier with my Thunderbolt hard drive, and there we got speeds both on the reads and the writes that were in line with what you would expect out of a 40 gigabit Thunderbolt port. So great performance out of those two ports there and they also, again, work well for video output along with other Thunderbolt and USB devices. And like most mini PCs these days, it does have a two and a half gigabit ethernet port here on the back. I did run some speed tests a little bit earlier with my multi gigabit internet connection. And as you can see here, we were getting 2.3 gigabits per second downstream, pretty much saturating that connection. So that worked well. Upstream was also giving us similar results here. So all in. Uh, the port configuration here is great. You also get another USB-A 10 gigabit per second port here and a USB 2 port below that for plugging in keyboards and mice. I was not as impressed though with the Wi-Fi performance. It does have Wi-Fi 6E on board, but like many other little mini PCs like this, the antenna placement is often challenging. So we didn't get the same kind of performance out of the Wi-Fi. I also did an iPerf test just to make sure that my internet speed test here wasn't out of line. And we should be getting on my uh, Wi-Fi 6 access point here around 700 megabits per second. Here we were maybe getting 250 or so. So the Wi-Fi performance could be a little bit better. Uh, you can also see the upstream was doing a little bit better around 400 and change, but still not where uh, I would like to see it on a machine with what should be a full Wi-Fi 6 connection. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We are running this at 4K60 on my display here, and we'll start with the basics, doing a little web browsing and see how fast everything pops up. Now, of course, I would expect a computer with 10 cores and 16 threads to perform like you're seeing here, especially when you are browsing the web. So everything here springs to life very quickly and renders without issue. All of the basic tasks you might do on this, whether it's web browsing, Microsoft Office work, is all gonna be fine. You've got plenty of horsepower and plenty of RAM to get good performance for those basic tasks, even on a high resolution, high frame rate display. And a little bit earlier, we played a 4K60 video off of my YouTube channel. We had a couple of drop frames at the outset, but once everything settled down, it was playing back without issue. 
And of course, these Intel chips are very good at video decoding, and I would expect to see performance like we saw here. So no issues doing media playback or basic tasks on this one. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 24.3, and that score is about what I would expect out of this generation of Intel processor, but we are now ahead of that generation, so take a look at that GMK Tech Evo X1 PC. That one did a little better outside the margin of error with the new Ryzen AI 9 chip, so there are other solutions out there that might perform a little better than this one does, especially at graphically intensive tasks. Why don't we take a look now at some video editing? So here we've got DaVinci Resolve running with a 4K60 project. I'm just going to drop a cross dissolve there on the timeline and play things back. As you can see, these kinds of simple edits, even at 4K60, are very efficient on this machine. This is what I would expect out of this generation of Intel processors. So all these types of effects that you're seeing here will render very quickly. But when you go into some more advanced things, like trying to do some color correction or color grading or dropping in some other kind of effects here, it will take a bit longer. And that's because this Intel chip is running with an older version of the Intel graphics, but also because you might want a GPU uh, for more intensive types of editing tasks like we're trying to demo here. And of course, you could connect an eGPU to one of those USB 4 ports on the back. Now, this is definitely not a machine I'm going to classify as a gaming device. So what you're looking at here is Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p at the absolute lowest settings. On some of the more recent mini PCs we've looked at with the new Intel and AI Ryzen chips, uh, we do much better than what we're seeing here. So we're just under 30 frames per second, sometimes getting a little bit above that 30 frames per second mark, but for the most part, graphical performance for the price point here is not comparable to what you might get on some other mini PCs out there. So I'm not gonna recommend this one for gaming. It can play games, certainly older games will run well, but if you're looking to do some games on a mini PC for this price, there are definitely some better options out there now. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,882. Graphical performance out of this machine is what I would expect out of that generation of i9 mobile processor. But if we look at that B-Link with a Core Ultra 5 or that GMK Tech with the new Ryzen AI 9 chip, both of those do significantly better graphically than this machine does because those are on newer generations of chips with improved graphics. So this is not a graphical powerhouse and definitely not a gaming machine. But it does cool itself off efficiently. We got a 98.9% .9 score on the 3D Mark stress test. That means you won't see much thermal throttling out of this. Generally, the fan is very quiet on here. Sitting at the desktop or doing web browsing, you'll likely not hear it at all. Uh, but if you are gaming heavily or doing some other tasks that strain that processor, the fan will kick on and be audible, but it's not obnoxiously loud. But generally, this is a very quiet mini PC. At idle, it's only consuming about 10 watts. Under load, the max I saw out of it was about 57 watts. So relatively power efficient here with a good amount of computational performance. Now, it does come with a fully licensed version of Windows 11 Professional, but if you wanted to run a different operating system like Linux, you can. I did test the most recent version of Ubuntu on here. Everything performed as expected. All the hardware was recognized properly. That includes the audio, the video, the Bluetooth, and the Wi-Fi, and the Ethernet. And altogether, it was a very nice Linux experience. And of course, you could dual boot Windows and Linux on this PC. You also have plenty of RAM to play with too. So if you are running a little server operation on your mini PC, you can get that done here as well. So all in, this is a nicely constructed mini PC. It performs fine given what it has for hardware inside but I wish the price was just slightly lower to make it a little more competitive, especially given that you can get higher performing mini PCs for just a little bit more. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.